let's talk about today's topic. Now, let's talk and let's ask some few questions to ourselves to begin with. Our country has become richer. We have become the fifth largest economy, and we're talking of becoming the third largest economy. But have you noticed that we have become sadder than when we were not so rich? Have you noticed that, that in your own life, if I take you back 10 years back, you could actually say very happily that I was happier than what I am today, no? It is so very interesting, no? And first and foremost, I'd like to thank Indranil, no? I think to think of this topic and bring it to the forefront is very critical. And I'll talk to you why. Why it is so critical for our country to talk about this topic in times to come, no? But I want to leave first some thoughts in your mind to get a grasp of things as to where we are today, no? We are richer, but unhappier, no? Now, if I look at some of the most successful people across the globe, and I figure out what do they do for their wellness? You know, this question, if, if you, if, and all of you can answer that. I think you pick up any, anybody whom you admire or who you think is successful and try to figure out in his or her lifestyle, what do they do across the globe? I'm not talking of India only. The first thing that you'll notice is this person talks of mindfulness. Have you noticed that? Anybody, everybody, yeah? The second thing you'll notice is that they talk of meditation, no? You notice that? Third thing you'll see is they talk of yoga, you know? Across. It's so very interesting. When you look at successful people, when you look at what do they do, and you try to figure out that after all the success and achievement, what exactly do they do for well-being? Or you look at the research done by some of the big universities of the world, the Harvards, the Oxfords, and you have it all over social media. You can look into YouTube, anywhere, and figure out what do they speak about in terms of a very good, healthy living. And you'll find three, four things. You know, obviously, mindfulness, exercise, which is stretching, mo moderate exercise. They don't have intense exercise. And then you'll see a group of friends is one of the most important factor for you to have a good life, no? And then you'll, they'll talk about a moderate level of income. We stay in They say that, I think the last study I studied and saw was that if you're earning in, that was in US, uh, $1,40,000 and above, it has no relevance on your happiness. So it's interesting. So if you put it down to Indian standards, it would be reasonably what most of us would be making. No, it will not be something that is out of reach, out of bond, or a crazy amount of wealth which is required to be happy. That is a myth which is debunked. So now let's simplify the whole, whole thing that we're talking about. Yeah? We are talking about three or four things. Successful people in the world do mindfulness, meditation, yoga. They are recommended to have a circle of friends, and they are recommended you know, to do some annual checkups and tests. That's it. Now let me take you back in your own country. And I don't know how many of you have been to a village for quite some time. I, I belong to the eastern part of UP. I do go to my village sometimes. So when I remember, as a growing um, kid, and I'd go to the village, in the village, if I would talk to anybody, they would know what a pranayam is. Phenomenal, right? In a village, every kid would know what a pranayam is. Even today, you go and talk to any kid, they can still tell you in India what pranayam is, what, no? Is about yoga. They can talk about that. Do you realize our country, over thousands of years, built a wellness mechanism of happy living and ingrained in the fabric of a society to the level of last mile, last kid being born in this country? Did you realize that? What an amazing country we have been in, where every kid knows what is wellness. And now you see, fast forward to today's time, how we have destroyed it systematically in our own endeavor. And today, no, this has become something in which you're trying to figure out what do we do to be healthy, happier, and no, more prosperous. Think about it. Think about our country. Think about each individual in our country. Go back some years back and figure out that when you were interacting 
and anybody and everybody knew what it is. When you listen and think about your grandmother or your mother, they knew what to do when you fall ill. You just heard Rajat speak about turmeric, clove, or anti-inflammatory. And I don't know how many of you, when you would, after a sport event, come back injured, your mother would get turmeric milk. How many of you, no? All of us. It is so phenomenal, it is so beautiful in a country where we have grown up knowing what holistic living is ingrained in the DNA of a fabric of a society. We knew exactly what has to be done to a place where today we stand and talk about health, wellness in a long-term basis. And today we have to think about it, no? Is it not so fascinating? And when you put these points together from where it is, no? Let's look at some data points. So I thought I'd give you some thoughts to think through and think about, no? How, when you talk of wellness long-term in any country, it has to go down to the fabric of the society, to the last mile, to the last kid in the village who knows exactly what has to be done to have a very happy, healthy life, and how does it build it, and how a country has actually achieved that. It is not something which is unachievable. It is not something which cannot be done, even if we are, you know, 140 crore people. That is something, the first thing is the belief that what we talk about can be done is what we should start with, because it has happened in our country, and it, now we have lost it to a large extent. It has to happen again. That's the first step. And communication is essential. And that's why in magazines like Outlook Money, people like Indranil, when they take up this cause and they put up these forums and they start talking about it, is there's a start or the rolling stone for engaging conversations. Now let's talk about the problem for our society currently. No? Let's talk about what exactly is ailing us currently and what should be done, has to be done, be it with the government, be it no, from where we uh, look at it. So now we heard some data point statistics, so let me not repeat it, but let's look at our current society, how it is structured. <clears throat> when I was a kid, that time, when our parents were working or doing business, they would try to be as close to their home as possible. No? That, that was a trend. People did not want to leave uh, till it was a hardcore compulsion. Even it was, they always yearned to go back to their roots and be very close to their parents. Today, if I look at my kids, or most of you youngsters here, that is not the case anymore. You have to rule the world. You want to go and conquer the world. You want to be all over the place, rightfully so. No? And I've seen the transformation. When I move around the world now, I see a lot of young kids. No? And, and look at all the global CEOs now. Most of them are Indians. No? In fact, one time I was doing a study of the top 10 Indian CEOs, looking at the market cap of the companies. They were already third largest economy, no? if I put in their market cap, no? in terms of the market cap of the company they control compared to the country. It's a matter of pride for us. Fantastic. It should happen. But you have parents who are alone now. No? They're alone now. And is this going to change? The answer is no. Should it change? The answer is no. So which means that our country is fast forward accelerating to a scenario where you'll have a lot of aged people. What we thought was a problem for Europe or Japan, what we thought a demographic dividend that we have in a country which is going to be very powerful for a country for the next couple of decades, economically very strong, our country will keep on propelling itself to greater heights, a lot of talent, a lot of people, fantastic time from economic powerhouse for a country, all these investments, cities getting created, phenomenal growth, any money, any business is set up, you are going to make it big. The country will propel you to become big economically. So that is good. But let's look at the social issues. Huge amount of elderly no, staying alone, defend themselves. Do we have something like a pension scheme which is sufficient enough for them to take care of themselves? No. no. Are they thinking about it? Is the current generation thinking about retirement? and saving for retirement? Answer is no. We are moving to a consumer you know, economy, which is good, but are they thinking about it? Why is this conversation relevant? No? So first statement, problem statement is a huge population of elderly with very successful kids all across the globe would be staying alone. That's the reality, and it's going to become bigger and bigger. Is the government thinking about it? As a society, are we thinking about it? Are we putting it up? First statement. 
Second statement. By all data and statistics, and I think this was a World Health Report, which says that in India, about 7% of Indians go below poverty line every year because they can't afford the health expenses. So, so that we understand it, let me, let me put it in, in, in a much more easier manner. So if you go to any hospital, try it, and stand near the billing counter, you will see people actually selling jewelry, selling land, taking loans to pay for expenses. If somebody falls ill, nobody from the family is just going to let it go. They will give their best, which means if they have to sell off land, if they have to sell off everything to take care of treatment. And in fact, a lot of times it happens, somebody from the village falls ill, has a heart attack, the family brings them to big city for treatment, and they sell everything off, and the person does not survive, and they actually go begging on the street. This is a harsh reality. 10 crore people in our country every year face the circumstances. That is the second data point that we have uh, for our country. The third data point, let's say if I take you back to some time, to the current level, how many of us have actually started noticing within ourselves or in nearest family and friends issues of depression and mental health? Have you noticed that suddenly? In the past five, 10 years, did you see a spurt in terms of cases of mental health? No. So if you all think the answer will be yes, each one of us would be knowing somebody or we would be going through this phase. You know? So let's try to keep these three problem statements today and let's think what should we do and how should we handle it as conversations to begin with. The first problem statement, a huge population of aging elderly is going to be in India. The country is not prepared to handle that. Second statement is 10 crore Indians go below poverty line, which means the family sells everything off to take care of somebody. The person may survive or may pass away and the family actually gets to the street begging. There's a second statement, there's 10 crore, if you're not talking of few numbers. And the third issue is a country, which was so happy, may have become the fifth largest economy, and maybe the third largest economy, is in a situation that you know that. No? And if I take you back to my original statement in which I said that this was a country where if a kid in the village, when he spoke to him or her, knew about meditation, knew about no, yoga, and was essentially very happy on the street. No? Now let's, let's see how do we put these statements and how do we try and solve it and what has to be done. The first statement is the poverty part. That is, that is pulling it down. So it's not a case of getting insurance done for all. The case is it costs the economy in terms of you get, if you have to get 10 crore people above poverty, like it costs the economy 1.2% of GDP growth. Just this. So if we have a health for all in our country, if our country is growing at 7% and we're super excited about it, we actually will start growing at 8.2% without doing anything at all. No. And they're not talking about because if you are going to have such a huge uh, population which can treat itself and has the money to treat itself, the kind of infrastructure development in hospitals, healthcare, that will add on to the economy, which will be another 1%. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about pure cost of bringing 10 crore people above poverty line to the economy in terms of the GDP growth is 1.2%. Now, this is where we have been speaking to the government on health for all. And if you look at a lot of the election manifesto this time, a lot of political parties will actually find that they're talking about health for all now, no? We had the Ayushman Bharat, which was covering people below poverty line, about 40, 50 crore Indians or so. We have the structured insurance plans, which covers about 20 crores or so, but still about 50, 60 crores of people who can afford don't have an insurance now. So what should we do? First and foremost, the government can say it's going to cost us a lot of money. Though the spend of the government to the GDP in terms of healthcare is still one of the least in the world scenario. But let's forget that. If I look at some developed nations like US, it is mandatory for all employers to ensure their Employees. It is mandatory. No? If you look at India, only 15% of employees, and that too in a structured scenario, or the ones engaged in, in a structured work environment are insured. No? 
which means the majority of people are insured. Let, so let's say we, we say that we make it mandatory. Then the issue comes in the cost. The, if you have house helps, if you have you know, somebody helping you, be it a driver or be it your, let's say the cost of you to insure that, and then you say it, it looks like an extra tax for me. But you are surprised to know for a good five lakh cover, when you have this tender of the government for below poverty line, as we call it, the Ayushwan Bharat, the cost of five lakh cover comes around um, 16, 1700 rupees a year or 2000 rupees a year. Let's do it for easy convenience, which actually means that for a family, on a floater basis of five lakh cover, the cost for the whole family comes, if I divide it by 12, comes to about 100 and, what, 150, 160 rupees a month. Who can't afford that? So if it comes out that whatever is the cost per family that the state is bearing for below poverty line, and people, when you make it mandatory to cover employees, and that gets plugged in to the cost, and you can subscribe to the government scheme at that cost for a five lakh sum insured, no, at that kind of rupee, which is less than 150 rupees a month, suddenly it opens up a huge possibility. And the issue of no, uninsured population starts coming down at a very, very hyper speed. And obviously, when I look at the election manifesto and I look at people talking of health for all, that itself is building up to the next level. Second is about the elderly part, which we spoke about. On the elderly part, if you look at, and we heard about some tech, I think as an insurer, we have been talking about creating an ecosystem to take care of elderly, and we have actually launched a product in which if something goes wrong with the elderly, and we have devices which sends out an SOS signal on its own, we actually send an ambulance, get the person picked up, take him or her to the best hospital, get them treated, even before the children or their you know, relatives or friends are aware about. So creating a whole ecosystem with this conscious thought of elderly living is something that has to be done. And the third part, which I spoke about, something which a country always had, you know, uh, be it um, yoga, meditation, I can say Ira here, for a long time Ira, no? So, which our country already had in terms of putting it all together. No, we should not wait for the West to tell us that it is good for us, no? We have to re-inculcate that in all our school curriculums, in all our teachings, and happiness and well-being should be an integral part of all school curriculum. Is it difficult? All the three which I told you. It's not difficult. Can it be done today? It can be done today. Is it impossible? No. It is the issue of creating that awareness, issue, issue of creating that conversation, the issue of putting problem statements together, simple solutions together, which have a massive impact on the country and the future of country, looking at the past, seeing the present, and building a great future. Thank you for patient listening. Thank you for being a lovely audience. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Singhale. Uh, what if, an absolutely... So, yes, sir, sorry, go If ahead. anybody has any question, we'll play, happy to answer. No? I think I, I still have about four or five minutes left. A any question on insurance All right, do something? we have a quick question? Yeah, please. Yes, yeah. sir. Can we have uh, a mic reach him, please? Because all my life I've been an insurer, so please don't hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tapan, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. My question is, uh, uh, the, we have been... Uh, we have... Government has been proactive in terms of uh, providing the insurance reach to across the masses. So my question is uh, still the uh, the LI part and the health part is is a slightly costlier uh, compared to uh, compared to the rest of the world. How we can uh, devise uh, you know the premium price in a such a way so that the health insurance can be covered to across the masses and life can be covered at the better prices. Your take on this, sir. Phenomenal question. I love you for this. Thank you very much for bringing this question up. So let me remove some myths first, tell what we are doing, and third solution for it. No, I think let's put it these three parts. First, it's a myth that in India, health insurance is expensive. In US, uh, the average ticket size for health insurance for a year is about uh, 10 to 12 lakh rupees. No? And in India, you don't pay anything which is 10 to 12 lakh. You pay about 20, 25,000 rupees or so. So there's, there's a huge difference in terms of premium. So in Indian insurance premium is very, very reasonable to begin with. Having said that, how do you still bring it down <laughs> is a challenge. You should never get complacent thinking that, no, you're doing good. That is something that we keep on pushing as an industry. What is that will bring the cost down? First is in India, you don't have a hospital regulator. 
So as an industry, we took it up, and if you'll be happy to note that the finance secretary actually sent a note saying that hospital regulators should be looked into. So the government has started talking about it. No, we actually took that up. That is critical, because you see the inflation in India on the health cost is about 14 to 15% every year. So let's say in three years back, the cost to today's cost, which actually has moved up, no, by 60, 70%. See, it moves at a very hyper speed. So there has to be a regulation in place because it's a very essential subject. And I'm very happy that after <laughs> years of conversation, we saw a note from the finance secretary to the health no, uh, ministry stating that we have to look into hospital regulators. That is the first thing. The second thing which comes to I mentioned to you, when you do a massive um, uh, health for all, no, uh, the premium, which typically, and luckily I have some friends who are very good in selling health, the premium which typically cost about 20,000 rupees a year is actually 2,000 rupees a year when you do it on a mass basis. The government schemes, as I told you, on, on the basis. So what I was mentioning was open another scheme for the general public. Like I said, make it mandatory for employer to insure every employee. And then for 2,000 rupees a year, you're getting a 5 lakh cover, which is spread across the family. Now, you can't be more, more reasonable than that. It's costing you less than 160, 170 rupees. So it's doable today, right now. So today, if the announcement comes, by tomorrow, you actually can plug and play and deliver at a very hyper low cost. Third is frauds. It's actually a phenomenal problem if I look at healthcare fraud which happens, you know? And to give you an idea, softer fraud and the more difficult one. The softer fraud is you go to any hospital, some of them are fair, some of them, you tell them you're insured, you actually have a billing which is 20, 30% more than if you say uninsured, no? That's a softer fraud. I, I use the word fraud because you're actually charging more for the same treatment just be insured, uninsured. It, it cannot be different, yeah? It has to be the same. That pushes your cost up because insurance is what? Collection of money from many to pay to a few. So if the payment goes up, the collection will? So what are we doing on that as an industry? Because as I told you, everything has to be solved. You just cannot say this is a problem statement. You have to solve it. As an industry with the government, National Health you know, um, Authority, uh, an exchange is getting created. All insurance companies have already plugged into that exchange. We are going to get hospitals also in exchange. So payment becomes very transparent, straight through from a consumer perspective. So the moment a consumer you know, uh, lodges in, his payment is at a real-time basis. So as an industry, we are pushing that to the next level. Now when that happens, and it's all on a very clear, transparent basis, then most of this you know, hyper or softer frauds and the bigger frauds, which are real frauds also, will start getting uh, so if you, that will still bring down the cost by about 25, 30% in the current scenario as it is, no? So when you put these three things together, and that's why I gave you this comfort that as an industry, we are pushing it very, very aggressively on all the three fronts to ensure that for the citizen of a country, they're able to provide health insurance at the very, very reasonable cost and at the highest efficiency possible. So thank you for your question. It's a wonderful question. No, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh. All right, should we take uh, one final question? Yeah, yeah. Please. All right, so yeah, we'll from you, off. and then we'll close because no, I'm we'll sure just take Mr. this Singh one, one, and I'll try to answer in a short file. It's very All good, right. yes. Sure, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, go ahead, sir, please. You have to use the mic, sir. So, no, sorry. Uh, yesterday, one company got listed by the name Medi Assist. Yeah. What is their job? Okay. What exactly the three points you mentioned, yeah. and in their highlight, they mentioned yeah. that last year yeah. they have returned to the insurance companies a sum of rupees 533 crore, yeah. which was the excess charge by the doctors from yeah. the patients who were covered under health insurance. Yeah. It's, it's now, very, this uh, kind sorry. of a situation scenario, yeah. which you expounded, yeah. is coming to find a solution in practice. Yes. Thank you very much. I think if we talk of companies like Meridis, it's the TPA. Yeah. They are third party administrators. So Correct. what actually happened was this, they are by regulators uh, and regulation license given to entities to be able to serve customers as an intermediary between insurance company and the customer. And yeah. they have a network hospital with the visit tie up and they process the claim. The claim settlement is still with insurance companies. Yeah. So that is, as by regulations, it will still be with insurance companies. They process the claim and put it on, and they do the hospital tie-ups. So they, we have people, which is the TPS, which do that job, and that is what Medi Assist does. And we have quite a few which do a very good job on that basis. And you actually saw when they mentioned that, and I've not read that, but you say that, they already mentioned that they do this saving. Yeah. That is what we are saying. So as an industry, if you're able to get into more transparent, more speed, and you have like, Smooth through for a, imagine the scenario, the ideal scenario. As a customer, you walk into a hospital. The moment your treatment starts, 
and since it's a real-time basis, like the UPI moment, the money gets transferred. For you, it's walk-in, walk-out, no hassle-free. Your premium comes down. It's cashless to the purest sense. I think that is what it is. In fact, today we are going to make a press announcement. We're going to have an announcement right now, where I'm going to, after this, going to address that. As a council, which is the industry body, we are trying to get all the hospital network, all companies together as a common pool, yeah. and we're trying to say that it will cash this for all. Right now, after this, we'll have an announcement on that. This is our endeavor to provide the most transparent and the smoothest possible thing. So thank you for your question. Thank you very much. The last one before she kills me, and then I leave. Yes, please. <laughs> So thank you for a wonderful presentation. So we have a digital community for the senior citizens and there is a very, very simple question that comes every time is uh, why is the industry or the government or other corporates not thinking more about medical or GI about someone who's above 65 or 75? So is there a plan by big companies like yours in terms of expanding the portfolio in favor of them? That is number one. And number two is, uh, of course, you being such a veteran in the industry, you know everything, but when they start talking to uh, someone who's junior or uh, starting their career in this field, they may not have e enough uh, information to tell them the, the simple, uh, and I met some few of the people yesterday as well, who are mid-level, they are also are not knowing what are the products in the senior citizen segment. So if you can just tell us if there's any big plan, the one that you announced, because that'll be very helpful for the senior community. So thank you, I think, uh, Indranil, next time you just get me the question answer, you know, it takes care of all my presentation. So as I mentioned, Rajat mentioned, he could not get it for his parents, I was surprised. Because we have healthcare supreme at 91, 95, also you can get it covered. No? So I think that's a misnomer to say at 65 you can't get covered. You have enough and more covers available uh, above that. You know? So if you have any problem, just write healthcare supreme, by the you get it covered. So that is the first thing. So there are covers available to any age group and very good covers available. So that is, the, even you have covers for diabetic, cancer, all that is there. So it's a myth to think it's not that. That's the first statement. The second statement is that if you Look at it from a perspective of, no, um, uh, when should you insure yourself? That is the question. Is, this is, not the, is it available or not? See, insurance works on a simple principle. If the accident has not happened, is the time you take an insurance. So let's say if your house starts burning, then you go and say, please insure my house. Will you get insurance? If you get it, let me know, because then that company will go bust in six months, no? Because whatever capital they have, Everybody's house goes for loss, they start paying for that. It doesn't happen. So when you have a body, you know, if illness has already come in, then when you start looking for insurance, it actually gets a bit too late because then those start getting excluded you know, from the policy. That is why it is very critical that you buy insurance when you are very, very healthy because then your policy becomes very powerful in three, four years' time. Anything happens to you, gets paid. Forget about any company. Any company in India, if you have a policy which is running for more than four to five years, and you go for treatment, it doesn't get paid, please write to me. Don't worry which company. I'll ensure that I, I'm standing with you. You will get paid. The policy gets very powerful. It's so simple as that. So fundamentally, and what is the cost of it? It's not expensive. It's like a cost with the, with the friends you go out for dinner for one night. It's as, it's, so what you should do is, first, if somebody has crossed 65, there are products available. I mentioned to you one product. There are many more. So I represent my company, just speak of my company. At the same time, the request is to all of us, please get a good cover when you're doing well. It becomes very powerful, it doesn't cost you much. And you also have you no know, rebate on taxes and all the stuff, the government has you know, done that bit to answer your question. And thank you for being a lovely audience. We would love to answer all questions. <laughs>